Yo, 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 what is going on guys? Adam from Six Flow Automations here and in this video I'm going to be walking you through how to build an AI agent that cold calls for you from scratch. And there's plenty of different ways to go about building this type of agent but the way that I'm going to be doing it in this video is probably the simple and most effective way because I'm not too much of a techie guy myself so if I can do it you can probably do it as well. At the end of this video you'll have everything you need to build this type of agent or you can simply follow along as I'm building so you'll have your own AI cold calling agent for yourself. I hope that sounds good. If it does, like the video, subscribe, leave a comment, and let's just get into the video. Now, the very first step to building this AI cold calling agent is to set up your Google Sheet. Now, in your Google Sheet, you gotta have two columns. It's mandatory. The first column that you that you need is the name. You gotta have the name because when we cold call people, we're saying, hey, Adam, hey, Sarah, hey, Michael, et cetera, et cetera. And then of course, the other mandatory column that we need here is the phone number because these are the phone numbers that we're going to be calling. And if you wanna add more columns to this Google Sheet, such as business, you're more than welcome to. So for example, if I were to be calling Sarah from Maple Marketing, you can get the cold caller to say, hey, Sarah, um, I just thought I'd call you regarding maple marketing. It adds a little bit more personalization to the cold call, which always increases effectiveness of the cold call, but that's totally optional. In fact, for this video, I'm not even going to be using this column. I just used it as an example to show you that you can really get flexible with this type of cold calling agent. But for the case of this video, I'm just going to stick to name and phone number. So the cold caller is going to say, Hey, Adam, blah, blah, blah. And if you're just building along, I'd suggest just putting your own name and your own phone number. And that way, when we test it out later, you can see if it works works for you. Um, one quick note is you need to add the area code in front of your phone number. So you see how it all has one. So that's the area code of my phone number from Canada. You got to add the area code for this is for this to work. That being said, once this is set up, you're good for now when we can go on over to retail AI to build this AI cold calling agent. All right, we are in retail AI and it is time to create a new agent. So what we are going to do is click at the top right corner of our screen, press create an agent voice agent and we're going to go over to single prompt agent right here and now we are going to press create and it's going to take us to a single prompt agent where we can now put in our universal prompt the universal prompt is important because it's essentially the blueprints for this whole agent okay through the universal prompt we are telling the cold calling agent what to do and what to say. So for the case of this video, I added my own universal prompt. I'll leave it in the description for you guys to copy and paste yourself. Um, it's essentially a cold calling agent that tells whoever we're calling about Six Flow Automations, which is the company me and my business partner, Noah, who also posts videos on this channel run currently. And obviously you would change the universal prompt for yourself. But what I will say about this universal prompt is it has a really unique format of a lot of ifs and thens. And you're, I'll let you read it through it so you can understand what's going on here, but whatever prompt you do for your own business and for your own cold calls, this structure right here, this if then structure is very effective and I would highly recommend it. And just another super quick note that you're going to need in your universal prompt is an end the call function. So essentially, no matter what your prompt says, you're going to have somewhere that says then end the call. And then in which case you need to add the function end call. So to do that, you just go over to functions right here, click add click end call, click save, and you're good. The next step to do here in retail AI is to publish your voice agent to a phone number. And if you don't have a phone number, I'll show you super quickly how to get one. So it's really simple. Just go to retail AI, go to phone numbers, click create or click the plus here, buy a new number, find a number, find a number and buy it. It might ask you for your credit card information before you buy it. You can do that in settings, but it's relatively simple and we'll go back to the next step once you actually have your phone number. All right, so I'm going to assume that you have your phone number now. So once you do that, you can go over to publish once you're back in your voice agent and we're gonna click outbound number. It's an outbound number because this is an outbound cold calling agent. Go ahead and select the number that you just bought Okay, and click publish. Once you publish the phone number to your voice agent, the retail voice agent, the cold calling agent itself is going to be complete. Now I hope it doesn't take a million years for it to load for you guys because it's taking a million years to load for me. That being said, once it's loaded, the next step is to connect the Google Sheet that we already made with retail AI because retail needs to know 
who to call, and the name of who it's calling. And we do that through N8N. We use N8N to make that connection. So the next step, of course, is going to be creating a new workflow in N8N, and I'll see you guys there. All right, guys, we are in N8N, and we are going to build this workflow from scratch that connects that Google Sheet to that retail AI voice agent, okay? So the first step is to add a trigger manually. You can change the trigger if you wanna do a schedule trigger. By all means, for the case of this video, we're just gonna do an, a manual trigger, okay? Once we do that, we can add our Google Sheets node, okay? Because of course, we need to connect to that Google Sheets that we just made. So let's go ahead and click Get Rows in a Sheet and simply connect the Google Sheets that um, you just made. So choose the document that you just made. You're gonna have to connect your Google account first. So I'm gonna assume your Google Google account is already connected. And then go ahead and click the tab, whatever tab you did. So mine's in um, this one right here, YouTube. And then go ahead and um, I'm gonna execute to make sure everything's there. Perfect, so as we can see, it is all there and working fine. I suggest you do the same. And now we're good to move on to the HTTP request node. Now for this node, I suggest paying very close attention because the details matter. In this one, if you screw up a small detail, the workflow probably won't work. So be sure to pay attention as I build this next node. Great, so it's time to add the HTTP request node. Right there, boom. So the first step, to set up this node is to change the method to post. So go ahead and change it from get to post, right? There we go. The next step is to copy this URL into this URL. I'm going to provide it for you guys in the description, not to worry. And it's going to be the same URL uh, for you guys. This exact one right here, you're gonna use the exact same one. The next step is to toggle on send headers. So once we send headers, right here we're going to go over to name and we're going to type in authorization okay we're going to type in authorization and the value of this thing is going to be bearer space and then we're going to paste in our api key and we get our api key from retail ai i'm going to grab it quickly and then that'll hopefully help you show hopefully show you guys how to get the api key from retail so go back into retail ai go over to settings Go over to API keys right here, click add key, press an API key, I already have one so I'm going to use it, but go ahead and create an API key, copy it, go back into N8N and paste it in right into that HTTP request node. So to recap, you're going to toggle on send headers and then under name, you're going to type in authorization, under value, under value you're going to type in bearer, space, and then your API key. Great, the next step is to actually add another parameter. So go ahead and click add parameter and under name, we're going to type in content dash type, just like that. And then under value, we're going to type in application slash JSON, just like that. Once you do that, the next step is to toggle on send body. So we toggle on send body right here. And now what we are going to do under specify body, we're going to change that to using JSON. And now we're going to type in um, a little code here that I'm going to provide for you guys in the, in the description. So don't worry too much if it's a little bit complicated. I'm just going to paste this in right here. Let me make it full screen for you guys. Perfect. And I'll walk through quickly what's going on here. So when it says from number right here, this is the phone number that you just bought from retail. You're gonna to wanna to put that in. Notice I have the plus one, that is important. The plus and whatever your area code is. Next, it is the two number. Now this is mapped to the Google Sheet, right? Because whoever we're calling from that Google Sheet, it maps the phone number, right? So we could call all these people from the sheet, right? One by one, all the phone numbers. The call type is a phone call, leave it as is. Next is the, dyna the dynamic variables. Now, of course, it's the name because when we look at this sheet, we don't want to call Sarah and we don't want to call Sarah and be like, hi, Adam. No, you want to call Sarah, Sarah. So that is why we set um, the, the name as a dynamic variable in retail AI. And I'm going to show you super quickly what I mean. So I'm going to go back into that agent that we just made and published our number two. So as you can see here in the retail AI universal prompt, I have name in double brackets here. This means it is a dynamic variable, right? So remember how I was saying before, you can put in business too. So all you would do is you would say, hey, hi, is it, 
So you say, hi, Adam. And if you wanted, you could say, hi, Adam, from the double curly bracket um, business. Okay, double curly bracket close. Then you would go back in to N8N and then you would add another dynamic variable that says business, right? And then you would map the business the same way that you just mapped the name. I hope that makes sense for you guys. But in this case, we're only going to keep the name as the dynamic variable here. Moving on to the override agent ID. To get this agent ID, it is relatively simple. You just go back into your retail AI agent here. Um, and then you're going to go to this top left corner here. You can see agent ID, click copy, go back into this thing right here, into this node and click paste. Great. And then you can click off of it. Let's execute this step right here. It is taking a minute to execute for whatever reason, but sometimes N8N is slow. You can't do anything about it. Here it is. So as you can see, I'm getting a call from Six Little Automations. It's actually the number. I just changed the number for the case of this video. And let's go ahead and listen to this call. Hello. Hi, Adam from More Business. I'm calling from Six Little Automations. We help businesses never miss another call by setting up AI receptionists that work 24 seven. Do you currently have a receptionist answer calls for your business? Yeah, I do have a receptionist that answers calls. That's great. Does it work 24 7 and cost under $1,000 per month? Definitely not. Yeah, I didn't think so. That's why you should go with Six Flow Automation. Great. So it followed the instructions exactly as I told it to. And a quick note, you would have heard that it says, is this Adam from business? The reason it said that is because in the prompt, I had business here and I didn't map the dynamic variable to say business in, um, in the node. And now I want to talk about a couple other additional functions that you can do with this type of voice agent. Now, the first thing that you can do is acquire an email address or another piece of information from the person you're calling. So to do that, you would obviously have in your universal prompt, collect this information, ask them for this type of information, and then you can go and listen to the recording or the transcript of the call. And to do that, you would do that through post call analytics. If you want to learn more about post call analytics, Noah, my business partner who also runs our channel six flow automations posted a video on exactly how to do that. You can click the card right above on this screen right now. Now, the other thing you can do for these cold call agents is to try and book an appointment right into your calendar with a human representative. And I say that because these cold calling AI agents are not going to be making money for you right away. And they're not going to be like, Hey, do you want to sign a thousand dollar deal with us? And then a human's not going to be like, yes. But what might happen is if you get this AI agent to be like, hey, do you want to book a meeting with our representative from the business? They might say yes. Then you can book a date and a time. So if you want to learn how to book appointments right into your calendar, Noah has also posted a video on this channel on how to integrate with Cal.com. Cal.com makes this whole thing super simple because it is natively integrated into retail AI. So the whole process is super simple. If you want to learn how to do that, there is a card on the screen right now that you can click. And and finally, if you want to learn how to make money selling these AI voice agents, check the link in the description below. Noah and I have a school community walking you through step by step how we acquired our first paying client in just 42 days after launching Six Flow Automations, which is our AI voice agent agency. So if you want to learn more about that, link is in the description below. And other than that, I hope this video provided some sort of value to you. If it did, be sure to like, comment. I'm going to respond to all of your comments. And of course, subscribe. Take care, guys. Have a good day.